Bonner with Kendall Digital Media and what we're going to work on today is creating a animated illustration using a, an original Photoshop file, bringing it into After Effects and uh, running a few um, basic animation techniques including the Puppet Warp tool that's being used here, um, the Liquify tool that's being used here, rotating um, objects along the timeline, um, and then I'll show you guys how to render and uh, get the right kind of file type. So um, let's begin. I hope you guys have fun. Bye-bye. After Effects, you have to force the alphabetical order of the layers in order for After Effects to bring the layers in correctly. So I've just gone in and renamed the layers to um, have A, B, C, D all the way through. And that way I'm not trying to figure out um, which layer order I need to go. So again, this uh, is set to be the right um, layer amount, just a, a small amount of layers, and each one has images um, that are completely drawn underneath them. So I can also run a test on this, and so if I want to take um, this gator head and move it and test it in Photoshop, I can hit Command T on that head layer, and just test what that would look like as an animation. So that'll work pretty well because I have stuff underneath it. So I'm going to hit command period to stop that transformation and this Photoshop file is ready to go. We are in After Effects, After Effects CS6 and I'm about to show you um, how to do a little bit of animation here. So what we're going to do is go to File, Import, File and we had this Photoshop file that we rigged and prepared it for bringing into After Effects. I'm going to bring it in as footage and I'm going to um, not click Photoshop sequence. And I'm going to hit open. I'm going to keep the editable layer styles and import it as a composition. Because I forced the alphabetical order, it's going to give me all of these layers in the right order. Um, if you don't force that, you'll have to move your layers around, which they move around quickly anyways, just by um, moving them around down here. But um, this is the next step for us, is um, we're going to do new composition, and our file is going to be 950 by 600 for this particular one. I'm going to call this um, Gator um, for the composition name. and we are going to, for this particular project, do 15 frames per second. And that is all good. I'm going to say OK. That gives us essentially our stage um, where we're going to um, bring in all of these layers. I just shift clicked it through, and I'm going to bring these layers into um, that stage area. Now, as soon as you bring those in, you're going to get all of um, the layers down in this essentially our timeline. And everything is shift clicked through so I can see the transform on there. If I click off down here, and I'm going to show you guys the Uber button, we call it. Um, if you click U, it will show you what is animated. Right now, there's not any animation in here. Um, that's going to be a useful button um, for you guys to be able to click in the future. Um, if I click on the head and I hit you, um, if I do have animation within here, I'll be able to see it. Pretty soon, these layers are going to get pretty intense and big, so we want to make sure that it's um, going to work well. All of these um, images right now are too large um, for my stage, so what I'm going to do is use my magnifying tool, hold down Option, and go back up to my Move tool, and shrink the whole entire thing. Um, by holding down the shift, first moving, then holding down the shift. And that's a good um, size for me. You don't have to hit return like you do in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to grab all of these objects and just move it right into the middle of it. Um, so I'm ready to go with this. I'm going to um, zoom into my stage just a little bit more. Um, it is really good when you're working in After Effects to use two 
ex like an, an extended monitor because this is going to get a little bit crazy pretty soon. So um, just a, a few helpful tips in terms of what we're going to do with this animation. Um, I really wanted to um, get him to wiggle his tail. So I'm just going to start with actually wiggling the tail. I click on that layer and then um, I can see this transform section um, arrowing down. These little clocks are the thing that you want to um, click on in order to allow for um, the, the object to move. I'm going to get my arrow tool. I've got now a new keyframe. Um, and this tail um, when I get my rotation point um, later down the timeline I can set the rotation point. I want to do it just on this little guy. Maybe I need to lock everything else in order for my tail to be the thing that I'm moving. Cool. Okay, so we're just doing a little wiggle and I want to just wiggle it slightly. Too much wiggle is going to be too much. You'll see that um, it's minimal movement is a really good thing. So I'm going to scrub my timeline and you'll see that it's doing the tween for me. Um, and you can also see that because I didn't set my rotation point, it's wiggling not from the location that it needs to do. So I'm going to go back to this part um, and you can just click onto this keyframe and delete it. I'm going to go back to this initial keyframe, click on it, um, get this tail, and I move the rotation point. So this is coming in from like what the original Photoshop file was. This is not the rotation point. I want this to be the rotation point where it comes directly from that part of the body. So now that that rotation point is set, I'll be able to um, go further down my timeline and click rotation on my tail and you'll see that it, it moves in a more natural way. So this is, I only want to move it very slightly on this so you can see that it's going to be moving slightly. So that's a better setup. Um, next I will um, show you guys uh, a lot of what, what this project was was just rotating and um, moving. Um, when you see the final file, all of these things are rotating and moving. But you'll have to do other things. So I'm just going to use this file as an as a example file that you can um, learn how to do other elements. Um, for instance, um, this face. In order to get the, um, the head to do the little laugh that, that we like to do, um, one of the ways to alter and, and manipulate that is to use the liquify tool. So um, on this head, if I go to effect and distort and liquify, oh my gosh, this tool is so amazing, guys. I can't wait to show you it. The effects section, we want to just keep arrowing down until you get into these. We want to turn on um, the distortion mesh on this. Um, and we're working on the head right now. Um, so that is giving us our new timeline piece. I'm going to click over to here, and I'm going to hit the U button, and I'll see where my other pieces on my timeline are. So I'm going to go right to that location, which is going to allow me to work in columns, which is a good way to work in animation. So now that I'm in this location, I can zoom in on my, my head, and pulling the spacebar to get that. Um, grab the liquify tool and I just want to make him like kind of giggle a little bit. Um, you can open up your warp tool option, options and make your brush size smaller um, and adjust things. So it's it's taken a bit of time to render that. That didn't turn out to be um, nice in terms of the way that, that that edge is looking. So I'm going to command period that or I'm sorry I'm going to make my brush size bigger and um, try to get this laugh to feel like he's funny. Um, so don't worry about when it when it does this um, pixel thing. Um, it will look like pixelated when you're in the middle of rendering it. That's because it's trying to 
redraw this new thing. So I'm just doing a slight alteration on it. So from that image to this image um, is, is where I'm going with this little part of the animation. Um, and those little distortions will make the, the character seem alive, and that's a, that's a great thing. So 